welcome or welcome back. In today's lesson, we will look at how we can improve posture, how we can unlock the settings of the chest and its relationship to the pelvis, how to access the options panel to do so and to get choices, things to choose from, postures to choose from. And we will do this through movement in a movement sequence. This lesson has two parts, one in lying down and one in standing up. And we will start with lying down on the back. So please come to lie down on your back. And I invite you to follow me along. So please come to lie on your back and have your feet standing on the floor and your knees pointing towards the ceiling. And as a first movement, start to lift your pelvis, but make it a very small movement. Your pelvis off the floor, but maybe just a tiny little bit. So maybe not a big movement, for sure not a big movement. Please make it a small movement, a small. What are the details of this movement? If you can Let's say you have one position where your pelvis is on the floor and one position where your pelvis is high up from the floor. So you're in this kind of bridge situation. And then let's say there's five stages in between. So there's half station and 75% station and 25% station and 10% station. And maybe there's even a 5% lifting or a 1% lifting. and know when you are where, at, at what stage of lifting. And while you start to focus on these details, you might start to notice things. For example, your knees. The higher you lift your pelvis, the more your knees distance themselves from your face. So your front side becomes longer when you lift your pelvis. Or maybe lifting your pelvis is difficult. So let's build something else in. So have your elbows on the floor next, somewhere next to you, maybe in a 45 degree angle. And your lower arms, have them standing like candles and press with your elbows against the floor, push with your elbows against the floor. And you will notice when you push with your elbows against the floor, your back muscles will contract a little bit. The, the, your strong muscles in your back will contract a little bit and what's, what's a good position for your elbows? To help lift your pelvis. So press with your elbows against the floor to help lift the pelvis. And the same question is for the feet. Where's a good position for your feet to help lift the pelvis? A good position for your elbows and a good position for your feet to help lift your pelvis off the floor. Or instead of pressing with your elbows against the floor, you could press with your shoulders against the floor. So you could point your hands towards the ceiling and straighten your arms and then like almost like two sticks, two poles and press with your shoulders. So maybe that's a unfamiliar way of doing things. Press your shoulders against the floor. But does this help? Or does it help to press with the elbows? Or maybe you can just rest your arms. Now, when you lift your pelvis, you will notice when your pelvis comes off the floor, of course, but the point of contact to the floor it moves along your spine. Is it to the left of your spine or to the right of your spine? Towards your head. So the higher you lift your pelvis, the more you're leaning against your neck. Is it? Is it your neck? What are you leaning against? When, you, when your pelvis is up, what are you leaning against? Is it the, your neck or is it your shoulder girdle? And 
play with this. So lower your pelvis a little bit, come to the 25% precision. So you will notice you will lean against where the, the middle of your upper back, or maybe it depends how, how you round yourself, how much you arch yourself actually. And by doing so, by playing with this, or by playing how far you push your knees down, you can shift the point of where you lie against the floor. And so thus we become aware of where we lean against. Is it a little bit to the left of your spine or is it a little bit to the right of your spine? And is it in the middle of your thoracic spine or is it more towards your neck? And <laughs> don't, come out, don't come up all the way onto your, onto your head. Don't, don't. So we don't need that, but just shift your weight up and down on your back to become aware where you lean against. And then also take, whenever you like, take a rest, extend your legs. And feel how you lie on the back. And when you lie on the back, you might feel there's more weight on one leg than the other, or there's weight on the legs or weight on the pelvis or the pelvis is lying maybe more to the left or more to the right or your shoulders are lying down more to the left or more to the right. And then stand your feet again and lift your pelvis again. The pelvis is up a bit and you can choose where you, where you lean against in your back with a little bit of a back massage. And then move your knees to the left. The knees to the left and thus you come to lean more against your left side and allow your head to roll to the left as well and then bring the knees back to the center. And also here we have like 0%, 25%, almost 30, 40, 50% of rolling to the left and also bring your knees to the right, the knees to the right, to the middle, to the left and where is the middle? And, and how, how, can you, how can you assemble yourself, configure yourself to that this, this whole thing is not strenuous. So you could just float your pelvis a little bit off the floor and move your knees to the right and to the left and you will feel maybe there's a little bit of a side bending in your chest and you can access different points on your back. You can travel, you can travel on your back up and down and left and right. How is it when you move your pelvis to the left instead of your knees? The pelvis to the left and to the right. When you swing your pelvis to the left and to the right, like a Hollywood swing. Does your pelvis turn? In which ways can you move and, and still make sense of it in an in a orderly kind of sense that you know, okay, now, is my, now it's my knees that go to the left and to the right. Then it's the pelvis that goes to the left and to the right. And lift your pelvis and lower your pelvis. Ah, and of course, take a rest. And feel how you lie down how you transfer, how you push the floor, how you transfer your weight. How you, no, it's how you, how you push the floor, I think. What is it? Do we push the floor? Do we float on the floor? Do we lie against the floor? And feel where you press against the floor with your middle of the back, or is it the upper back, or is it your shoulder blade? What, what's, what's in contact with your with your with your floor, with your back, and then stand your feet again. And this time we make do an embrace, a little embrace. So place your left hand onto your right shoulder and your right hand on your left armpit somewhere. So you embrace yourself with one hand, one arm resting on the other arm.
So the left arm is on top of the right arm and you make this little embrace where you can hold yourself like a nice little package. Mm, so nice to hold yourself. Mm, yes, it's nice, like a nice tight little package. And then lift your pelvis again. Oh, and with this package, maybe it becomes more obvious when you roll, when you roll on to your shoulder girdle and maybe you can go to your seventh vertebrae or number 15, number 14, number 11. <laughs> how, are the, how are the vertebrae numbered? But let's say you're in between, you lean against in between your shoulder blades or a little bit up more towards your neck or more towards the back of your head and what's what's where is a place where you feel support and where is a place where you feel like oh i don't want to lean there <laughs> okay so maybe take a short rest bring your pelvis down again bring your pelvis down like in between even if i if i don't suggest to bring the pelvis down just take a small rest and then bring the pelvis up again a bit and your knees to the left and roll your head to the left and roll your, your upper body a little bit to the left and then back to the center and so roll a little bit to the left and at what height do you position your pelvis? So what's the, the position? Position and posture, what's the difference? Action, posture, position and trajectory, and how can we think of a movement to bring the weight more to the left and to the center. Where's the center? And to the right, the knees to the right, and the head to the right. Or with the pelvis almost on the floor, maybe the pelvis on the floor, but lifted a little bit. <laughs> On the floor and lifted. I mean, <laughs> what, what is this kind of position? On the floor, but not 100% on the floor, a little bit lifted or a, a little bit more. And so you can access like all parts of your back. Every little spot on your back. And a little rest. So Yes, so we're using the back muscles. So if you would like to feel that when you lift your pelvis and with your hands, you can feel your back muscles. Wow, they are contracting. Did you know you have such strong back muscles? So the back muscles are really working when you bring your pelvis up. And it's a particular, particular alignment. And that's why I chose this lesson for working on upright standing on upright posture. So when you use your hands to feel your back, when you lift your pelvis, you notice you have a long front line and the pelvis is up and still there's a little bit of an S curve. I was looking for this S curve in the spine because your upper back is a little bit rounded. You cannot push, you could, but we don't. We don't push the head back. So it's, we don't go in a full bridge, but just we, we, we work with this S spine, S spine, J spine, S spine, this shape you will have when you are standing upright. And we mock this standing upright in a mock up uh, simulation in, in lying down. And in lying down, of course, we can look at details we would never be able to or hardly be able to find in standing. Ah, and then a little rest. And then another embrace. So this time put the right arm on top, the right hand on the left shoulder and the left hand on your right armpit and bring your feet to standing if they are not standing and lift your pelvis and the knees to the left and your head to the, the head to the right. So let's make a differentiation. So you turn your body to the left but the head to the right or turn the, the body to the right, so the knees to the right, but your head to the left. <laughs> so the head in the opposite direction, 
So this will help us to walk down on the carpet. Yes, can you feel this? You can walk downwards. You can walk your chest towards your feet. Or if you turn your head together with your knees, so head to the left and knees to the left, and knees to the right and head to the right. So you can, you can walk up on the carpet and when you reverse this relationship, you can walk downwards on the carpet. <sighs> okay, and then take a, take a little rest on, on the back. So, the back starts already to soften up and we start to have more options. We will be able to, um, be able to put ourselves in more positions and, and then thus choose from, from more positions. And it will be an easy choice because we can use our feeling how, how we want, what we want to choose. Okay, then again, please stand your feet and let's do something else. So um, push with your feet upwards to, towards your head. So maybe, maybe you want to lift your forefeet. So maybe you want to lift your toes and your forefeet off the floor and just push the floor with your heels and, and push up and push up, yes, upwards to push upwards, but don't push, but don't slide your upper body on the carpet. Just push upwards towards your head and then pull with your feet, pull your feet, pull with your feet, pull with your feet the chest. Pull, use your feet to pull down your chest and use your feet to push up your chest. And if you, if you, yes, and if you, if you let go of your neck muscles, your head will roll. And if you not let go of your neck muscles, your head will not roll. So if you keep your neck stiff and tightened up, your chin will come closer to your chest when you push with your feet. It's like sliding up. But if you let go of your neck muscles, then the head will roll like a melon like you would roll a nice little watermelon or honey, what is it, honey, honeycomb, honey. A sweet melon, a sweet melon, like a sweet head on the floor. Let's try this with the legs extended, maybe that, that's easier. So extend your legs and flex, flex and yes wiggle your toes wiggle your feet flex your feet your ankles flex and bend bend and extend your ankles to to rock to rock your body rock the body rock the body <laughs> yes rock the body extend and flex your ankles to rock the body and this rocking goes to your pelvis and the pelvis transmits this movement up to your shoulders, through your spine, to your shoulders, and then the head can roll. And if you do this very slow, you can pull and push your head. When you let go of your neck muscles, you can rock your head and you can roll your head. And look to the left, turn your head to the left and rock and roll. And turn your head to the right and rock and roll. Oh. And turn your head to the left and rock and roll and slowly turn your head to the, <laughs> to the right and rock and roll and back. <laughs> okay. <sighs> and then again, please stand your feet and lift your pelvis. Wow, did this get better? Wow, easier. 
and then again push and rock and roll but instead of your feet instead of your legs extended the pelvis is up and it's the same thing the head can rock and roll rock and roll and turn your head to the left and rock and roll and turn your head to the right and rock and roll push your spine up and down and how how high do you want to to lift your pelvis or you just float the pelvis on the floor or maybe put your feet together so your knees are together and your feet are together when you do this so interesting the feet together and bring your arms out to the sides the arms out to the side uh -huh. when you rock and roll and rock and roll <laughs> okay uh, and then take a rest hmm so nice isn't it really nice to lie like this after all this rocking and rolling Did I do the seesaw breathing with you? I, I, I did. But did you do it with me? Seesaw breathing, when you imagine your chest, your lungs like a balloon and you squeeze one end and extend the other end. Or we could say we push the air from the stomach, from the belly area up to the chest area or from the chest area down to the belly area. So either, either one end one end is extend, expanded and one end is contracted. So that's the simple version. To push the air up and down in the chest. Do you, can, can you do this? You don't even have to hold your breath, but to, you could breathe in and hold your breath and do this. Or see, I can talk and still do the movement. And there could be... So, so let's keep the simple version of pushing. Let's do this. To push the air up and down in the chest but of course not the 100% simple it need we have to have a little challenge so stand your feet and lift your pelvis and then push the air so what do you do with your shoulders do you press your shoulders against the floor to help lift your pelvis so the whole body everything we assemble our whole self into this posture. Nothing is left behind. We become one with the posture. We are the posture. And then, once your pelvis is up, move the air in your chest from one end to the other. So try to find this movement, how you can move, move the air. And... If you are an expert in moving air, <laughs> you could move it to the lower left corner and the upper right corner, or the lower right corner and the upper left corner. <laughs> you can move the air diagonally, so um, transform your chest to change the shape of your chest so it can expand on the upper right area or the lower left area or the upper left area, or the lower right area. <laughs> wow, this could be complicated quite fast. And then at any time you want to take a break, take a break. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, one last time. Stand your feet, stand your feet, and you can use your elbows to bring up your chest, or you can use your shoulders to help, or you can just simply float up your pelvis. So lift your pelvis off the floor, and bring your knees a little bit to the left, and back to the center, and a little bit to the right and allow your head to roll together with your knees to the right and to the left 
Extend your arms towards the ceiling, touch your hands together, interlace your hands and then bring your knees to the left and your hands to the left and your head to the left and everything back. So, how do you do this? And then to the right and then the hands up and down a little bit. So the arms are extended towards the ceiling, the hands interlaced and the hands up and down a little bit and to the left and to the right and you can uh, make a circles with the hands and the arms and you can let your pelvis follow and we could have like nice little circles, double circles, wow, or maybe we can make it more complicated into a eight or a line and to the right and to the left. <laughs> so we can play with many geometric figures here or just have your arms out to the sides or let's do the rocking again, rocking up and down at different heights. And when you do these kind of things, yes, so maybe, yes, do these kind of movements and become aware of the S shape again of your chest so your pelvis is lifted, your front side is long, there's a relationship from your knee up to your neck and the other knee up to your neck. Wherever you position your pelvis in space, if you turn your pelvis, if you bring one part of the pelvis forwards and the other backwards, like in walking, and your whole spine, your whole chest can participate in these movements of the pelvis and your head can go in the same direction or the opposite direction and all your ribs can participate not as a block but everything can fold and expand and move and twist wow so this is what I mean with options with settings so there's so many things you can you can do with your chest in response to the movements of your pelvis. Okay, one last rest on the back. Let's do a short flexion because we did a lot of extension with the back. So draw up your knees a little bit ah, over your belly a little bit and then bring your right hand behind your head. So your head is resting in your right hand and with your left hand hold your left knee and then bring your right elbow closer to your left knee so you roll up, fold up a little bit. Yep. And then towards the right knee, so right elbow towards the right knee. And then change over the hand, so put your head into your left hand, your left hand is holding your head and with your right hand hold your left knee and bring your left elbow towards your left knee or your right knee towards your left elbow. So if this is a little bit fast, I have lessons for this here on YouTube where we do this just for the whole lesson to explore different patterns of flexion, harmonizing flexion. And then let go and just feel how you're on the floor. How is your relationship on the floor? Where do you lean against the floor? And then, and then please roll over one side and come up to standing. Yeah, so you're standing and, and how, how is it? How, how is it to stand, to be upright in this world? How, how, do you, how do you feel over your feet? Do you feel anything? And maybe you don't feel, maybe you feel like floating inside this world. <laughs> floating in this world and that's how it, how it should 
be three grounded, grounded of course, but light, not disturbed by posture. So you can act and move and do whatever you like or whatever you, is important. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Oh, whatever is required or brings us joy or joy to others and, and you're not burdened by, by the restrictions of, of your chest and pelvis and, and lower back and shoulders and all this. So, so this should feel... How, how does it feel? Now, to the details of the alignment. Please find a door or a wall and stand with your back to the door, against the door blade or against the wall. and decide how far you want to have your feet from the wall. So when you touch your heels against the wall, maybe it starts to be some, quite some work to, to stand. So stand a little bit, your feet like a, a hand width away from the wall. And does your behind touch the wall? And if your behind touch the wall, so let's do this, that your popo, <laughs> your behind can touch the wall. And so you're upright, you're upright in front of the wall. And then if you're like this, are your shoulders touching the wall? So remember, remember the situation we had on the back on the floor. So where you had the pelvis away from the floor and your shoulders, the shoulders touching the wall, but with your chest touching the wall. So find a, find a good distance for your feet away from the wall and, and, and feel when you bring your pelvis forwards, do you lean more against the lower part of your chest, which would mean the yeah, shoulders are hanging forwards and down, or do you lean against the middle of your back, so your chest will rise, or do you lean against almost your neck, the uppermost part of your shoulder? So your chest will rise and find where can you position your spot where you touch the wall. Where is a position that feels effortless and well supported. And we were turning on the floor to the left and to the right and up and down and find, find this position where you feel well supported and upright. <laughs> Yes, and then we can bring the head forwards and take a step and then you're pretty much pretty much upright in a in a relaxed in a relaxed fashion. So you're not you're not pushing out your chest too much and you're not depressing your chest. But it's it's a position where you feel where you feel balanced. Where is it? Balanced? Balanced? Balanced and well supported. <laughs> okay, so then for a moment let's forget all this. Let's forget all this. Just shake, shake out everything. Why not shake out? Shake or shake not? Rock or not? <laughs> rock not? And then. I need to say thank you for watching. It was my pleasure to have you, to present you this lesson, to lead you through this movement sequence and take good care of yourself, play with these movements and see you in the next video.